uh, made very significant investments in Pakistan's economic progress over the years. If we go back to the 50s and 60s, we saw very heavy investments in agriculture development, in the education sector, but also in the trade and logistics infrastructure uh, as well. For years, people kept talking about, you know, oh, our strategic geographic location. Well, it's nice to talk about it, but you've got to do something about it. If you just think about that location for a second, it immediately comes to your mind that if uh, we had a high quality uh, trade, transit and logistics infrastructure in the country, it would immediately lead to uh, very significant tremendous economic benefits for Pakistan. It's written on the wall. The potential is unbelievable. Our nations, our regions cooperated for centuries. It's not about Kazakhstan or Pakistan. It is in general about cooperation between Central and South Asia. These markets are so close, so close, that seasonalities alone can make trade flow. If we could really connect the landlocked countries in Central Asia with the Indian Ocean and use the Pakistan infrastructure, uh, Pakistan's logistics setup, then I think that would be a game changer. It would be a win-win for businesses here in Pakistan as well as businesses in Central Asia. For us, Pakistan can serve as a regional hub, connecting uh, our country with, uh, with other continents. And vice versa, Kazakhstan can serve as a uh, regional uh, transit hub for Pakistan, connecting your country with so-called big Eurasia. Just to give you a small example, say rice sector, if we are able to enter Europe through Kazakhstan and all that route, imagine or have a warehousing facility somewhere in Central Asia, you, Asia, you can imagine the kind of freight cost uh, that we can save. In collaboration with uh, different organizations and in particular with uh, uh, Prayer, uh, project of the USAID, we are developing our economic cooperation. USAID's one of the strategic priorities has been to have Pakistan get more integrated into the regional economy. There's a huge potential just in the neighborhood. We as a program invested in a number of the building blocks uh, related to activation of TIR in cooperation with the Ministry of Commerce and other partners uh, in the Pakistan government. Geographically you are the shortest route and everybody knows that. And this exercise has taken a long time. There's always been bilateral, but now we have brought in multilateral. So when a, a cargo is, uh, is bonded within Pakistan's border, it can go all the way to so Uzbekistan, to Azerbaijan, uh, to wherever the TIR convention allows. And that's a great uh, you know, facilitation measure. It, it enabled uh, the first uh, pilot uh, TIR operation between Pakistan and Uzbekistan uh, where a Pakistani truck uh, of TCS Corporation um, was able to take goods all the way from uh, the Karachi uh, port to uh, the uh, Termez port uh, in Uzbekistan via Afghanistan. Two week time for any transportation is a very good time for export. Uh, if you use TIR trucks which are direct export, that can be even shorter, 10 days even. If a truck is moved from Karachi, let's say to Uzbekistan, it can reach Uzbekistan within 5 to 7 days. If there is issue or no border close, no. now we are growing. Actually, we are now growing and we are seeing a growth, but it's still early. One of the most significant um, areas in which Priya and uh, USAID assistance has been able to push through uh, with successful reform efforts is really the automation, the digitalization of uh, trade processes. Specifically on PSW, I think this is one of the success stories which we have recently uh, seen in the case of uh, trade facilitation in general. Nobody would imagine that uh, a product like Pakistan Single Window will actually come up out of a developing country like Pakistan where we have been facing a lot of economic and political challenges over the last few years. The right elements came into play. 
um, and, and that included um, the commitment from the government of Pakistan uh, and the customs department uh, very specifically. Uh, it included the long-term patient uh, support of USAID. PSW ki jo, jisko foundation hai, wo basically Priya ke help se rakhi gai hai. PSW also provides an excellent trade information portal that um, uh, any company from anywhere in the world which is looking to do business with Pakistan, in Pakistan, with Pakistani partners can uh, explore and understand uh, Pakistan's trade procedures, its laws, uh, as applicable to their specific uh, area of business. We are not only giving information for Pakistan, we also have embedded the international tools in that. So if you're exporting to the US, for example, we would also let you know what kind of compliances you have to achieve for making sure that your product can enter the US market. So I consider PSW as a success, and I think we can build on that success to actually expand on other government departments. We want to realize our potential, uh, the national economic potential of Pakistan. Uh, women have to be playing a central part of that. There is no other way for this to happen. How do you integrate women? How do you integrate businesses which are led by women entrepreneurs? And there's some very dynamic you know, female entrepreneurs out there. Uh, we just need to be able to um, sort of leverage all that strength and all, all that dynamism and, and, and a lot of skill and a lot of talent in a way where they'll be able to access international market. Recently, uh, we took uh, uh, the first women-owned uh, businesses group to uh, Kazakhstan Almaty. We were in the trade delegation uh, to Almaty, Kazakhstan for the 13th Central Asia uh, Trade Conference. I never have thought to go to Kazakhstan. Uh, we only think that we can go to Norway, we can go to Germany, we can go to Istanbul, but we never thought that the neighboring countries are more important. It was a very diverse, uh, you know, collection of women and uh, it was a great learning from among each other. It, it was really good to be surrounded with the people who have the right kind of products and uh, uh, they were representing Pakistan. So it was a proud moment altogether. After the 2022 floods, which were devastating for Pakistan and uh, the economy, there has been um, a significant focus of USAID's strategy in Pakistan on looking at climate concerns, climate challenges, and ways in which we can strengthen adaptation mitigation frameworks. When I look back, I mean, I don't know if I was a young so there were very few voices. There were very less understanding. It's very pleasing to know uh, that cement sector is also thinking about sustainability. The rice sector is thinking also about sustainability. I think uh, what they're doing is really of paramount importance. Bringing key stakeholders together, uh, generating new ideas, uh, key insights are coming out from that discussion. and the, and and. Above all, a lot of awareness is being created around that, right? In 2022, uh, we took uh, one of the uh, Pakistan's largest soap noodle producer uh, to an R exhibition. And now that producer is, has captured more than 90% uh, of Uzbekistan market. The when we first went there, and we told that we have only a chemical plant in Pakistan producing soap noodle. They said, what? Is it really in Pakistan? We said, yes, it's Pakistan. This is the product. We just check and see it. You have what we need and we have what you need. So this is, I would say, kind of win-win situation in terms of developing cooperation between our countries. This export, which was not there almost, we were zero four years back. And today we are exporting something like 50 million US dollars or stuff like this per annum. And there's a potential of doubling it in next few years. I think 
very few examples uh, can be cited in the development sector where the engagement of a donor has been so consistent uh, over so many years and having touched upon so many stakeholders. So that talks a, a lot about the unwavering support of USAID to the sector, to the betterment of Pakistan's economy and to the potential that exports uh, and export-led growth holds. For this country. One thing I would like to talk about this US aid Priya guys, very professional, very focused. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, our government should learn from them how to how to help industry and how to help the country in in growing exports. I think DAI has been um, very they've been able to sort of pull together an exceptionally talented team and very early on also in the life of the project they were able to pull the experts um, and experts who knew what the issues are experts who were able to really direct the approach of the project i think that has been one of the um, key successes of this project which is you know you have the right people with the right kind of skill set with the right kind of um, know-how and experience um, to provide the direction that is needed. My hope is that uh, we will see um, many more uh, investments coming online other partners other multilateral and bilateral partners including future uh, you know uh, trade and economic development projects um, picking uh, up these interventions and building on uh, upon them.